Hey guys, this is John. All right, it's another edition of Climbing the Tactics Training Ladder. It's Tuesday night. I'm 34-0 so far, climbing the ladder, but you never know what will happen in this session. I hope this keeps going though, so let's get started. I'm at 1677. We're solving for accuracy, focusing on being precise. We'd rather be precise than fast. Okay, so here I can check on c4 and drive the king out to d2. Check on c2 thereafter, king e1. I don't see where that's leading. I also have a check on f4. We always want to look at our forcing moves, right? That would compel rook d2, but after knight c4, the thing is we're getting mated ourselves. Queen c7, king a8, queen c8 mate. So I feel like we need something faster here, not just a check and then uh, setting up a threat. We have a perpetual if we want. Queen f4, rook d2, queen f1, rook d1, queen c4. Again, the king has to come out here. Uh... Yeah, that, I mean, queen f4, I assume that's at least a perpetual, but I don't see much further. I need to coordinate the queen and the knight, and I'm not immediately seeing a line to do that. Hmm. Queen f4, rook d2. Aha, that's it. Queen f4, so I'm going to play this and tell you guys my thought process after I deliver the checkmate. So that was a matter of finding the precise order with the queen. We needed to compel the rook to d2 and then give a check on c4. So you had to kind of triangulate in this one. Uh, in doing that, we took away a flight square from the white king. This, in my mind, highlights the importance of always trying various move orders of the same idea when you're trying to solve or when you're just playing your own games. So tricky little problem because at the outset, queen c4 is the move that springs to mind, at least for me. And if we play queen c4 then the white king cannot go to b1, it's covered by the knight, so white would have to escape to d2, and I just didn't see a follow-up because the knight is further away from the king. Uh, we can go queen c2, but king e1, white is slipping away. So it took a moment, but then I eventually found queen f4 first. Again, the king cannot step to c2 or b1, white must block with the rook, and then we deliver the check here. Very important that the king cannot go to d2. King d1 is forced, uh, or I suppose rook c2 could be played, but then queen takes c2 checkmate. So king d1 and now check here, and the knight controls the flight square. So always, always, always try various move orders of the same idea. If your chess conscience is telling you that something strong is present in the position, you should listen to it. And uh, don't be afraid to mix up the order of moves to find the absolute best way of proceeding. Okay, let's keep going here. 1686, I see we're threatening a mate on g7, which black blocks promptly with their last move. Well, we're down some material here. I'm not going to count exactly much, but even sizing it up at a glance, it's pretty obvious. We need to attack black on the dark squares. We have a dark square bishop. They do not. And the only way I see to do that is to play queen h4, trying to come in with queen f6. Okay, so now black is letting us take this pawn, but what about this check? We can throw in this check first. That might be even stronger. Uh, we're going to force the king to the corner or force black to block here and now we take on f6 everything done with check if we had taken with check on f6 on the second or sorry without check on the second move then the problem might have blown up in our face so queen h4 not a forcing move i didn't even examine a forcing move because there aren't that many present there are no checks in the positions no no good captures the only captures are queen taking a pawn which is not good you can dismiss that in a half second so then I was looking at the imbalance in the position. This is getting a little more complicated, but looking for uh, the way in which we might have an edge on black. And here, being down uh, an exchange plus what? If we have time to calculate the material now. Exchange plus two pawns, so four points of material. We have to go for an attack or something significant. Otherwise, it's just not going to cut it. So we've got that dark square bishop. That's something we can point to and say, I have influence on the dark squares, and you may not, black. You may not have in, as much influence on dark squares as I do because you don't possess a dark square bishop. So in that way, we find queen h4 trying to come into f6. Not too many bla ways black can stop that. I mean, queen e7 is going to fail. We just take the queen. So hence, the computer played f6, and we get to throw in a check here on d5, take advantage of the newly opened diagonal. Had we played queen takes f6 right away, we're still threatening bishop d5, but that gives black a little more leeway. Like maybe black can throw this pawn in the way. The black queen is guarding g7, so I think white's coming up short here. Next problem. Bishop f6 guarding against 
Queen takes h8. This one is a nifty little maiden too. It's about, whoa, 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 whoa. Did I miscalculate? Queen, king takes f8, rook d8. Oh, I miscalculated. The king can go to g7. I got cocky, guys. That was a, <laughs> that was a bad slip. Thus, I break my streak of what, 36 and 0? I'm 36 and 1 now. I got way cocky there. Completely missed that after king takes f8, rook d8, double check. I thought that was decisive. The king can escape to g7. Ah, oh, man. Okay, well, let's try to resolve this. I'm just going to think about it for a moment. It looked like a position where there was going to be a forced checkmate, but maybe not. So what if I change up my order of moves? What if I use my advice? So rook d8 check first. Well, queen takes d8, queen f8 check, king d7. I guess there's a check on d6. White has a perpetual, but nothing more. All of these pieces are stuck on the back rank. So that's not going to work out. We could just play rook takes f6. It looks so banal, though. Rook takes f6, removing the defender of h8. Rook takes f6, knight takes f6, queen takes h8. We're winning material. Yeah, because then white can pick up the knight thereafter. Could it really be that simple, though? Could be. I mean, if it's the best move. Hey, it's the best move. But rookie six check, another forcing move we'd have to look at. Bishop takes, queen f8, king d7. I guess you could pick up the rook here. But again, I, I worry about all these white pieces that are just slumbering down here. So I don't think that will work. So it seems like rook takes f6 is just the way to go. Trying to get that rook on h8. Let's see. Oh, no. We'll go back and look at that problem later. But uh, as you can see from that last problem, I didn't take my own advice. So let's try to recover here. So if bishop takes f5, black could trade queens. This knight is kind of stranded over here, but that's not fatal for black. Looking at forcing moves, rook takes h7, king takes h7. I don't think we have enough firepower to hurt them there. Ah, uh ah, -uh, unless we play bishop takes f5 check thereafter. Yeah, that removes the guard on the queen. So rook takes h7, king takes h7, bishop takes f5 check. And then after the king moves, or rook takes, probably rook takes is the best move, then queen takes queen. Barring a much stronger continuation, I think I will go for that. Yeah, I like that. That wins the queen. I think that should be a pretty easy technical task for white thereafter. Well, I don't know. Rook takes h7, king takes h7, bishop takes f5, check. Rook takes f5, queen takes d4. Black's pieces are split up, but there's not that many pawns left for white. I feel like white should win, but I'm not 100% sure. What other moves could be played, though? Everything else looks kind of slow. Yeah, I think rook takes h7 is probably it. So let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, now we check here. They'll take with the rook, and we just take the queen. Okay, so we solved that one, gained a few points. Yeah, just a matter of getting uh, the move order correct with all the forcing moves, because black is ready to take our queen, so we have to act quickly. Again, bishop takes f5 was the first move I thought about, because that just wins a piece back. But after queen takes queen, I guess rook takes h7 check. So let me show you this line. So queen takes queen, rook takes h7 check, king g8, bishop takes e4. I don't think white's doing uh, as well as they should be. Black's, in fact, up a pawn right now. There might even be some trouble with black attacking this bishop, which is defending the rook. So, yes, rook takes h7, on the other hand, does the trick, forcing the black king into the line of fire. And then bishop takes f5. I was just a little hesitant whether to um, go into this because it looks like white has a technical task to complete. We've only got the a4 and the c2 pawns remaining. And we're probably not going to win like the rook or the knight. We're going to have to start picking off the black pawns and gradually win. All right, next problem. Black playing f4. So whose king is weaker? Our king or black's? I notice we can play a6 and try to set up queen b7 checkmate. Other checks or forcing moves are not obviously good to me. 
a6 on the other hand will require black to defend the b7 square so if they play like rook to d7 then rook e8 check should work forcing the rook back to d8 and then deliver the mate so if a6 i think queen d5 or queen d7 is probably going to be forced if queen d5 there's queen c7 check king a8 queen c8 followed by mate so queen d7 is the one move i want to refute if i can is it possible to refute that move though hmm just holding fast I don't see anything f4 is guarded I'd like to play queen takes f4 check there but I can't queen takes d7 rook takes d7 mm. nothing decisive okay so a6 queen d7 perhaps holding for black what else we could play our rook in so rook e7 threatening rook b7 check followed by rook takes a7 there it's possible for black to check us on the back rank though that's one reason I wasn't jumping for joy at the possibility of playing rook e7 so rook d1 check yeah we probably have to take it rook takes d1 queen takes d1 check king to g2 well, I can always trade queens with queen d5 okay anything else I feel like I'm missing some idea a6 queen d7 just going back to that again I could play rook e7 there but that check again on d1 always slows us down I feel it's a bothersome check rook d1 it's not really possible to play king g2 and ignore it is it hmm doesn't seem like it should be rook e7 or sorry a6 queen d7 rook e7 rook d1 check king g2 f3 check try to force queen takes f3 so that you can take the rook d1 is hanging that that gets complicated almost too complicated i think hmm working through a tough problem here so we've got our own back rank to worry about well we could play a takes b6 that's not a move we've looked at forcing move but black will just respond with a takes b6 i don't see what we've gained by throwing that in hmm. so a6 queen d7 rook e7 this is the most forcing and promising line i can find right now rook d1 check let's say king g2 and then if queen d5 check i think we trade queens and rook b7 check should be good there at the end of that line there's also that issue of f3 though f3 queen takes f3 queen takes e7 rook takes d1 it's good for white we're up three pawns on the king side but i don't see anything crushing what else so rookie six immediately or rookie seven immediately without the inclusion of a6 that seems pretty similar after rook d1 check again well king g2 that time maybe rook takes c1 in reply is possible rook b7 check king to c8 I'm gun shy because of that third problem that I got wrong. <laughs> so I'm even being more cautious than I might otherwise be, but we we got to focus on solving for accuracy. I don't care if my rating is taking a nosedive because of this problem. I want to get it right. Hmm. So a6 queen d7 we could make a queen move there but i don't think that's the solution so rook e7 rook d1 check if rook takes d1 queen takes d1 check king g2 
thing is, black can always trade queens with queen to d5 check. That's why I don't like that. I mean, I think the end game might be winning for, for white even still, but it's not the type of tactics training solution you'd expect. This is one deficiency of tactics trainers is like sometimes the uh, solutions are not solutions you may uh, even come to in a game because they're not as practical. I'm not saying that's the case in this problem, but you're solving one of these tactics trainer problems and you know that it's going to be uh, something pretty straightforward. Like you're not going to be forced to get into a slightly better end game from these problems. Rook e8, rook e8, there's rook d1 check again. Rook d1 check is pesky in a lot of lines. Unfortunately, if I want to get one of my rooks involved, I kind of have to allow it. And I don't see how we get the, the c1 rook involved. I mean, we can't play rook c7, they just take it with their queen. Maybe we play a takes b6, a takes b6, rook a1, trying to threaten queen a7. Looks like an odd way to proceed. Again, there's queen d7 to contest with. So I, I don't see that being the solution either. We could play a takes b6, a takes b6, rook e6, just going after this, this pawn. Again, rook d1 check. Rook takes d1, queen takes d1, king moves up. I just have my doubts. <laughs> rook e7, rook d1, check. Rook takes d1, queen takes d1, check. King g2. Let's say queen d5 check, trade the queens, queen takes d5, rook takes d5, a takes b6, a takes b6, g takes f4. I think white's winning that endgame, but again, I don't know that that's the solution. Rook e7. Likewise, we could, we could go for that similar line with um, a6 first, a6, queen d7, then rook e7. Still rook d1 check. I think I'm going to try the a6 line. We spent enough time on this problem. So, okay, so they did play that. Yeah, let's go rookie seven. And then the problem just ends. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a good problem because it's only a two mover. And based on what I was calculating, I think we got to go further than that. We'll check it out though. So let's analyze. Yeah, the end, this is the engine eval right here. I think you guys can see that. So it's... Okay, so it's in white's favor, if I'm reading that correctly. a6, queen d7, rook e7. And should the problem continue, f takes g3 is the best move? What about this? So check here. Because I was thinking, if this happens, black at least gets to trade queens. And then, yes, this should be a winning endgame for white, but, again, not 100% sure. Um... Maybe it's trivial to the computer, but I don't know. All right, anyways, let's go to the next problem. King to d7. So we can take the rook, but the rook is kind of trapped. I don't really want to take it. What about queen f8? Hitting the rook on e7. It's a really awkward piece. If queen f8, rook e8, we have queen takes f7 check, which is going to either win the rook or win the queen. So queen f8, how can, how can black respond? It looks like only king to d6, which puts them in another pin. Maybe I can play h4 after that. Get that pawn running while they're stuck in this mortal pin. Yeah, if I can get my pawn up a little bit further, I'm loving life. You don't want to cash in too soon. I don't think bishop takes e7 is going to be the move. Queen f8, on the other hand, I very much like. So queen f8, king d6. I'm just going to play h4. Let black twist in the wind with that pin. 
That rhymes. <laughs> that was a great rhyme. Twist in the wind with the pin. Or I could play C5 check. C5 check probably wins even quicker. Yeah, that's that's probably crushing. Okay, so let's play queen f8. I'm near near certain this is correct. Yeah, it didn't go on any further, but after king to d6, which I think is the only way to fight on, because again, rook e8 runs into this, and either the rook or the queen is going. So after king to d6, probably several ways we can go. I was thinking just run this outside pawn, because this is a pass pawn, and uh, once this pawn gets up a couple squares further, then we might take on e7, and black's king could be out of the box to promote. Meanwhile, black has no good way to respond. No checks on my king that are worth mentioning. So yeah, he's just done for. C5 check may be also good, just to draw the king away. Do this and try to get it to take so we can take e7. Might have to calculate what would happen in the case of this, but I suspect, well, maybe there's an outside chance for a perpetual. But I think h4 was would probably be the way I would go here. That pin is deadly. Next problem. So we're flirting with 1,700. I'm still 11, 11 points away from that mark. Knight f6. This queen is looking off sides for black. I want to trap it. So how can I go about doing that? If knight d1, that breaks up my rook. So I think rook bf1 would be the, the way to go here. So if rook bf1, the queen has to go somewhere to the g file. And then we could play rook uh, f to g1 force the queen back to f2, and then play knight d1, completing the picture. I think that works. So we want to go knight d1, but only when this rook has been transferred over to the g-file. And if we do that, all the squares that the black queen has available will be gone. What if they play rook bf1, and then they counterattack our queen somehow? Uh, like rook c8, rook a c8. I guess we could play rook takes c8 is the point. Desperado with the queen. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm going to go for it. And so again, here is the idea. Get the queen to come back to f2, and then pow, right in the kisser. Knight d1. Okay, so that was a, a nice maneuvering problem. A couple ways to attack the queen, but rook bf1 getting the job done in the best way, because knight d1 would have broken up the rooks if we play knight d1 immediately, then I think something like uh, queen to g2, for instance, hitting the rook on h1 looks annoying. So I refrain from playing that move. Yeah, and black just doesn't have many flight squares, only g3 and g2. If they were to play something like that, then it's important that we do not have to take their queen, since they would take ours. We can take here first. And if they take our rook, trying to continue this uh, cat and mouse game, then we take here with check, and we will emerge up a lot of material. Okay, nice queen trap there. Queen c7, hitting the rook. So white has an extra bishop. We've got this massive kingside pawn. So clearly we cannot take the rook because we get mated. Queen b5 looks pretty good. Abandoning the idea of winning the rook, but threatening queen b2 checkmate and also defending this. Queen b5, aside from queen takes b8 check, how can white resist? Because if bishop c1, there's queen b1 checkmate. No, we don't want to check on c4, because that would allow a queen trade. Queen takes c4. But queen b5, I am liking. Not anything else towards our king. Our back rank is weak, but white's queen is the only piece attacking, and so long as we have the rook there, we're good. So let's do it. All right, so we solved that one. I suppose the difficulty here is just detaching yourself from the double attack on d1 and d2, expanding the number of candidate moves you look, you look at. If not for queen b5, I think we'd be looking at rook moves, which seem eh, maybe possible because there is this double attack, but queen b5 is more clear-cut. Yeah, just threatening the mate on b2. And the other line was if bishop to c1, trying to guard against that mate possibility, then they run into a new checkmate, queen b1 mate. Next problem. I feel like I should do a few more as penance for getting that one wrong. <laughs> okay, here, <clears throat> the white king looks awfully close to being mated. 
I think this is a maiden three. I, I say I think because uh, I haven't been 100% this session, but knight f1 check, king h1, knight g3 double check, king h2, rook h1 checkmate. That's a pretty darn straightforward line. Nothing white can do about that. Time to pull the trigger. Yeah, just a force maiden three, the knight dancing around. That didn't seem like a very hard problem to me, just following the forcing moves, but maybe, um, you know, possibilities like bishop g1 allowing the king to escape to g3 kind of suppress the score on this one. Some people have been getting it wrong. Okay, so I've done well, about 10 problems now, something like that. Let's keep going. Knight b4 hitting the rook. We've got this pin down the e-file. White is currently down a single pawn. Doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Rook takes e7 check. Springs to mind. It's a forcing move. If queen takes e7, then rook to a8 check. Would we'll we'll skewer that rook here, so the king and the rook. If rook takes e7 check, king takes e7, we have queen e1 check. This knight on b4 is loosely defended. If we remove the defender, it's a completely undefended piece. So I like the look of that line. Otherwise, we're maybe having to move this rook from a6. Rook a8 doesn't work. Queen takes. I don't see any other place the queen can, or the rook can really go to. So yeah, I'm liking this. Let's do it. And now this check. Anything better? Just reassessing for a moment. Bishop g5, there's f6. Now I think this check is good. Yeah, king moves back. Let's pick up the knight with check. Problem solved. Eight points. So seeing that the knight is loose is important here because queen e1 check is not a typical device. But in the context of this position, it's a great fork on the king and the knight. And the other line is if rook takes e7, queen takes e7, then rook a8 check is skewering and, and winning the rook. Next problem. King, rook, and knight versus king and rook. Well, this is a theoretical draw, if not for certain positions, like this one, I assume. Because rook c7 check will force the king to the back rank. We'd love to fork the king and the rook or put, put black in a mating net. How do we do that? It'd be hard to believe this doesn't start with rook c7. Because that just, as I said, forces black to the back rank. And then bringing up our king looks like the natural continuation thereafter. Kind of depends where the king goes, right? We'd have to, we wouldn't want to have to um, calculate exactly what happens on king e8, king f8, or king g8, but we may have to. So if, let's say king e8, then king e6, I suppose. Threatening rook c8 checkmate. He can't check here. He could play king d8, however. But then we're maybe fleeing with the rook over here. Black's rook on b5 is in an awkward position, is the, the theme. So rook check, king e8, king e6 is looking good. Yeah, if rook b8, we can switch the rook over to h7. So what if rook c7 check, king g8? Let's just say king g8 trying to run away. Well, king g8 should be very similar. We're threatening rook c8 mate. We're also threatening knight f6 check. And the other move is rook c7 check, king f8. King f6, just familiar theme, kind of oppose the black king. We're threatening the checkmate once more. He can run to e6, but hmm, king e6, king f8. Where is the mate? We check there, he escapes to g7. If we play knight f6, he throws in the annoying check on b6. So if rook c7 check, king f8... What am I missing? Because it looks like it should win, but we're missing some piece. King f6. King e8. Hmm. Check on c8. King d7 is not working. So king e6, I would assume. And if we're king d8, I switch the rook over to h7. So king back to f8 is the only thing that's uh, making me hesitate. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. 
Rook c7 check, and I guess king e8 or king f8 is the only moves that are giving us problems. So let's say king e8, king e6, king f8. That's the key position right there. How to win. Uh, maybe rook, rook f7. Rook f7 check. And then if king e8, there's knight c7 check. If king g8, there's knight f6 check. King h8, rook h7 mate. That must be it. That's a subtlety. Okay, so let's play this. Yeah, so now we're going to play this one. And note that they can't check on b6 without losing. Okay, so black goes that way. I thought that was the easier one because we can just bring the rook over. And I don't see anything black can really do. Rook b6, knight takes b6 is not stalemate. Uh, they can run to c8, though. We got to look at that possibility. The king running to c8. So we give a check, they escape to b7, and they're getting out. Even in simplified positions, there's so many ways opponents can just create problems for you in chess. <laughs> so you got to be ready to tackle everything. Okay, so adjusting here, maybe rook d7 check. Rook d7 check. Ah, yeah, rook d7 check, king c8, knight e7 check. King b8, knight c6 check. And then if king a8, there's rook a7 mate. So king c8 runs into knight a7, and we finally win the rook. That looks like the forcing way to do it. If king e8, there's knight f6. So yeah, th this is the point. And now check here. So you got to dance with your knight and then pick up the rook. So finally get this fork. Hmm, nice problem. I like that one. Showing the coordination between the rook and the knight, pushing the king around. Only possible because Black's Rook is on a very poor position on b5. It's subject to these forks, as you can see. Yeah, the move order was crucial there. There I actually changed my mind halfway because I missed... I was about to play Rook h7, but I missed that Black could reply with King to c8. So, in this position... Yeah, I would have been blindsided by this move, and maybe Black can draw now after that. Probably they can. Rook d7, on the other hand, keeps things forcing. If king e8, well, that's just mate in two, like so. Good mating pattern to know with king, rook, and knight. And you saw what happens if king c8. We give a check here, force the king to this undesirable square, give another check, and then you have to go king a8 and get mated after rook a7, or play king c8 and get forked here, as happened. So... Nice problem. Rook c7 check, not hard to find on the first move, but refuting the other possibilities is. If king f8, I think king f6 is going to lead to the same position after king e8. Uh, what if king g8? I think on that one I said king here is good, threatening rook c8 checkmate. Even taking the rook doesn't help, or taking the knight rather, because black is still going to lose. So this probably leads to even a more rapid demise for black. Yeah. If they have to go passive like rook b8, then check. And again, we're delivering mate on either f7 or h7. Rook and knight coordinating. Let's do two more problems. Queen f6. So white's down a pawn. Black is offering a trade. We don't want to take that trade unless there's a real compelling reason. I feel like I've seen this position before. This looks familiar. So queen h6 check. King takes f7. We can bring the rook in with check. Black is escaping to e8. Then we can take on h7, hitting the rook and also threatening queen d7. Mm hmm. Maybe that's it. Something about rook c7 seems familiar in this problem. So queen h6 check, king takes f7. That's forced. Rook check. King e8 is forced. Queen takes h7, hitting the rook. And we've got such strength on the set on the seventh rank that I don't think black can survive. Note that also our back rank is um, vulnerable, yet black has no way to take advantage of it quite yet with the queen on f6. Like he wishes this pawn were gone so he could play queen a1 check. That line seems to, ch to check out. Uh, queen takes h7 at the end. If rook f8, queen d7 would be mate. If rook h8, then queen d7 check, king f8, rook 
C8 is going to mate soon. So I'm convinced. Let's do it. Also, if queen e7 here, queen takes h7 is winning. So kind of a quiet move, really. There's also check here, but I mean, queen queen takes h7 just looks better to me. Yeah, let's play that. Okay, so black is giving up the queen. All right, so following the forcing moves, nothing new here. Queen h6. This is absolutely forced. King takes h7, or king takes f7 to reply. Give this check. King e8 is the only safe king move. And then that's that's the hard move. Queen takes h7, because you might be tempted to cut the variation off uh, right here in your head when you're looking at it from the start. That's why when you're calculating a force line, it makes sense to go one or two tempi beyond the force line if you can. Like if you can see the position clearly in your head and you haven't uh, came to a conclusion about the line, push yourself, see if you can go a couple moves further because you might find a move like queen takes h7, threatening the rook and threatening queen d7. All right, final problem. Let's try to end on a positive note. King d8, we've got some monster bishops harassing black. I want to get my queen involved. d6 is guarded by this bishop. What if we play queen to e3, threatening queen e8 checkmate, also threatening queen b6 checkmate? Double attacks are the key to chess. How does he defend? If uh, queen e3, probably queen takes f5, but that doesn't help. Queen e8 is still checkmate. So I don't see how he parries both of those threats. Okay, let's try. Yeah, queen e7, we're not going to take that. He can go to e8, but we're going to win the queen at the very least, and then pick up the bishop thereafter. So double attack in this problem. Hitting, even though we're not hitting uh, a piece per se, or two pieces, we're hitting two squares very hard. The e8 square, queen e8 checkmate, and queen b6. Black just doesn't have a good way to cope. His coordination is quite po poor in this position. Buried bishop. Uh, do nothing rook on h8 bishop that hasn't been developed here yeah king stuck in the center it's one-way traffic white's bishop on b8 makes a weird impression but <laughs> okay let's see if i can go to that problem i don't know if i can uh but i want to show you guys that problem i got wrong and what happened let me just play around with my settings for a second hmm Okay, I think if I click this, it's going to show me a list of the problems. Maybe not. Maybe not. I want to go back. <laughs> Last 10, progress. Hmm. Sorry while I'm toggling through the menus. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is a list of the problems, and I can probably find it based on, oh, is this just all the problems? This might be all the problems in the database. Yeah, I don't remember studying some of these, so. Oh, that's too bad. How do I get to the problem I want to get to? Tactics. I know there's a way to do this. Bear with me. Or you can just end the video if you like, but bear with me. I want to show you guys this problem. Ah, this must be it. Okay. So, tactics theme. Here we go. Okay. This is what you've been waiting for. So this is the one I just got way too cocky on, and I thought I saw a maiden 2, completely backfired, I missed the king escaping to a key square. So bishop f6, black was defending the rook in the corner, rook takes f6 was the solution, pretty simple, just removing the guard, but yeah, I, I just didn't calculate the line through far enough. Queen f8, king takes f8, rook d8, double check, thought that was mate. And maybe in my mind's eye, there was a pawn on g7 or something, but king to g7, black could escape. I'm not sure it's letting me make moves here, but oh yeah, here we go. So here, I could have sworn this was the solution. I guess there's even bishop f8 here, but black does escape too, the g6 square. So it shows you that 
even experienced players like me, uh, we sometimes get ahead of ourselves and we don't proceed with um, the caution that we should. So, uh, I don't know. Maybe that'll be heartening to you guys. It can happen at any level. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this session. I pumped up my rating a little bit. I'm over 1,700, and I'll keep going with these tactics. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.